Then from Kansas to Pennsylvania Soon developed that movie mania Riding their jalopies through the dark And route to Hollywood on bus There's music and mirth all over the map As the boys take off on the transcontinental gal chase That will keep you in the state of hysteria there's mania in Pennsylvania, when a Great Dane goes off with their car. A lucky day in Iowa, when they bump into Pat Crowley, the prettiest pickup any picture could ever give you. I drink like you drink, and I don't know how much you drink. I couldn't have stayed in this business 50 years if I drank as much as they say I drink. People don't realize that, but they want that. You cannot work if you're drunk. I walk on stage with... About that much apple juice. They think that's bourbon. Now, if anybody, a singer especially, drank that much in one gulp, not only could he not sing, you couldn't talk. Real great, Dean. Just wonderful. Well, thanks, Gloria, and thanks for giving our sign-off for the summer such great trooping. Yeah, Miss Graham. Say, how's about having a date with me tonight after the show? Well, I'm sorry, Jerry, but I expect to be tied up. That should make it more fun. <laughs> 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 we're we're going to be tied up tonight, too, Jerry, if we got to unpack all the presents we bought in Europe. I certainly envy you fellows. You picked a perfect time when you went to Europe. Ah, to be in Scotland when the heather is in blossom. Ah, to be in Smirnoff when the vodka is in bloom. <laughs> well, anyhow, thanks for inviting me on your program. Our pleasure, Gloria. We want to thank you for coming. That's right, Gloria, and we also want to thank all those nice people connected with the show for having made this season such a happy one. Plus, of course, a deep bow of gratitude to our wonderful audience. Yes, thanks, all you cats and hound dogs. It's been real crazy. <laughs> Gotta run, fellas. Good night, Dean and Jerry. Good, Good night, night Gloria. Gloria, and thank you. Before we go, we'd like to wish all you folks a happy summer and a great vacation. And when the big day comes, remember us and toss a couple of cartons of Chesterfields in your bag. Either way, regular or king size, they're swell-tasting smoke. And they're best for you. Yes, for your best vacation, take along premium quality Chesterfield. You'll like them. So until next fall, this is Dean Martin. And Jerry Lewis saying good night and thank God you, everyone. <laughs> From Hollywood, you've just heard transcribed the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis Show. Produced and directed by Dick Mack. Written by Arthur Phillips and Austin Kalish. With music prepared and conducted by Dick Stabile. And this is George Fenneman wishing you a happy summer for Chesterfield. By the summer of 1953, network radio was allocating increasing time to local affiliates. Here's why. Budgets were shifting to TV. The final episode of the Martin and Lewis Show aired on July 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Gloria Graham was the guest. Opposite on CBS, yours truly Johnny Dollar aired starring John Lund. Try new Fatima. See how smooth it is. Fatima is made by the makers of Chesterfield, Liggett and Myers, one of tobacco's most respected names. Tonight, visit with Cousin Willie on NBC. Dean and Jerry made six more films together. Their last was Hollywood or Bust in 1956. I had to. I was getting tired of doing the same thing with Jerry. Nobody was paying attention to me, and I knew it. I was just a straight man. But I loved it for only one reason. I never had to learn dialogue. Because he would say, I think I'm going down to the drugstore. And i say, oh, you're going to the drugstore? I just repeat. Oh, straight men always repeat what the comedian says. 
During shooting in 1956, their mutual animosity reached the point where Lewis would only speak to Martin through director Frank Tashlin. And Martin told Lewis he was nothing but an effing dollar sign. After the film completed principal photography on June 19th, their breakup was widely reported. They fulfilled their contractual obligations with a farewell engagement at the Copacabana Club. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis's last appearance was on July 25th, 1956, exactly 10 years after their first teaming in Atlantic City. Well, the breakup was inevitable, and I spirited the breakup. I was really responsible for breaking it up because I knew that it was going to have its finality very quickly. Simply because if the tables were turned and I was Dean Martin and Dean was Jerry, we'd have split up maybe five years earlier. See, Dean was an incredibly patient man and incredibly understanding in that we opened at the Copa and they wrote a full page review about Jerry Lewis. I don't know that they mentioned Dean other than he sang a few songs. And he took that kind of treatment for 10 years. Jerry's the guy, Jerry's this, the silly kid, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry's the businessman, Jerry writes, produce whatever, and it was always Jerry. I couldn't have taken that. Wait a minute, I'm here too. The most underestimated great talent in the history of show business was Dean. He took it for 10 years, and then finally he just wanted to get out on his own and do his work and be acknowledged for that work. To forget that he sang and mention only the crazy stuff they did together, that's terrible. And it was unfair. And I said, this is going to explode before too long. And I went to Dean and I said, look, we're not getting along now only because there's some undercurrent here where you would like to just step out and be acknowledged as an individual performer with talent, and you are. And I want to do some other things too. Let's just wrap it up. And I got the perfect time. We go into the Copa, we close on the 25th of July, let's make it 10 years to the day, and we did. We had $250 million in contracts the day that I approached Dean about, let's just stop it. You know, it was the best thing we did for both of us. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis didn't speak again privately for 20 years. Although both continued to thank each other publicly, like in this Dean Martin interview with Edward R. Murrow from 1958. Dean, what do you regard as the biggest break of your life? Well, outside of meeting my wife, Jeannie, I, I think the biggest and the most wonderful break of my life was meeting Jerry, Jerry Lewis. We had ten wonderful, great years, and I enjoyed every, every minute of it, and I think that was a real lucky, lucky break for me. They crossed paths that year when Lewis was a guest on Eddie Fisher's TV show. Martin jumped out from behind a curtain with a memorable line. The crowd and Lewis couldn't contain their affection. Let me do what I have to do. Jerry, I, I would be very... Just very... don't sing. Do what I... Uh, Dean, I've been told by more than one of your friends here in the East that you only sing one song in your latest picture. How come? Well, this is a straight dramatic role. Incidentally, they, they have taken the song out of the picture, and uh, there are no songs in it at all now. And it's just a straight dramatic thing. And, uh, well, it's uh, my first try, and we hope it's fine. It's with Marlon Brando and Montgomery Cliff and the Young Lions, which will be out in March. Well, maybe this will be the start of a whole new career. Free from Lewis, Dean Martin became a huge star, both as a recording artist and as a movie actor on his own and as a member of the Rat Pack. He also hosted his own hugely successful TV variety series, The Dean Martin Show, from 1968 through 74. Lewis remained with Paramount Pictures, appearing in and directing a succession of commercially successful films, at one point becoming Paramount's biggest star. He continued philanthropic work, which led to mutual good friend Frank Sinatra finally reuniting the duo on live TV 
during Jerry Lewis's 1976 Labor Day telethon. Listen, I have, a, I have a friend who loves what you do every year and who just wanted to come out and say, would you send my friend out, please? Okay, where, okay, where is he? We just send him out here. Come here. What is this here? Break it up. I think it's about time, don't you? And thank you. Yeah, I think it's about time. We, well, we folk. We son of a bitch. <laughs> Should have been a Jew that did it. We could whip the world without the guns of Navarro. There they are, folks. I don't know. So how you been? <laughs> you know, it seems like uh, we, we haven't seen each <laughs> other uh, for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there was all those rumors about our breaking up, and then when I started the show and you weren't here, I believed it. Show you guys to your room if you like. The lights are out upstairs, so follow me. If you want. Oh, he drinks a lot, this kid. Uh, so you working? I work six weeks a year at uh, the Megum. The Megum. <laughs> and six days I do a roast. And would you excuse us a minute? <laughs> I want to see the wires are all right. <laughs> Gee, it's nice to see you. No, I'm sorry. over here. Right. No, I was, I had to, I had to come in because I, I had to, you know, I had to go and this was the closest place. <laughs> you always have to go. I always drink, you know. Oh. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, yeah. wow. Oh, I'm sorry. It was your life. <laughs> I, I got off last night. No, 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 no. no. We're gonna, we're gonna, we have a, we have gonna, a we're gonna, we got a melody to do. A mel, melody? Yes. Right, together? Yeah. Goodbye, yeah. Jerry. Oh, okay. So long. It's been nice to see well, you. Well, there we go again. Goodbye, folks. <laughs> they embraced with Lewis in tears, and their friendship finally renewed. Both claim they spoke every day from then on. Thanks for coming over. I didn't mean to wake you, oh. but you're on. Ah, uh, me? Yeah. I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only.